Welcome to the Uplift. Get on in here. We have a great show for you today and a great cast of characters. Starting with the boy who went viral for his honest, I mean very honest sandwich review. What he's doing now with his newfound internet fame, we will tell you in just a bit. And a girl with a frightening diagnosis in two years to live, how she overcame the odds and became a star. A mom with three kids who are losing their vision, what she's doing to give them a lifetime of visual memories. Oh, this is cool. She's doing it before it's too late. And then a boy who donated his own money to make a wish so he could build something special. And also, we have a California cowboy with a connection to a queen. That's right, how the unlikely pair formed a friendship. All of that, plus our most heartwarming videos, you just need to see. You are watching The Uplift. Hey, what's up, y'all? I'm Nate Burleson, and this is The Uplift, the show that lifts you up for the next 30 minutes. Now, kids are often the ones to lift us up, right? They tend to say whatever is on their mind, and those unfiltered thoughts end up being pretty funny. Our first story is about a boy who became famous for doing just that, sharing what was on his mind. Caitlin O'Kane has more. Hey, you did it. Mommy? Yeah. Kale sandwich, by the way. Thanks for letting me. That is not what you expect a kindergartner to say when they get off the bus on their first day of school. But Abe Endege is an honest person. On the first day of kindergarten, I had a good day. Made with a few friends. Nothing else. Recess area, small. Nothing else. Lunch. Table, sandwich, nothing else. <laughs> you may be familiar with Abe. He went viral this year for that honest review of his lunch. His mom, Ricky, posts that same terrible sandwich video every year. The difference what happened this year is instead of just posting it to my friends and my Instagram feed or in my stories, actually, I posted it on TikTok for the first time and then TikTok did its thing and it really went viral. So now we know why Abe has become known as the terrible sandwich kid, but what is the story behind the sandwich? I didn't realize I needed to pack Abe a sandwich because in our town, kindergarten is still half day. And so I thought the benefit of a half day is that I didn't have to pack him a lunch. I was wrong. We had nothing in the house. We can't send peanut butter in because of the kids with the uh, peanut allergies. So I came up with this idea to do a butter and jelly sandwich. When I took a bite of it at school, I had a really terrible sandwich. <laughs> He's now in fourth grade, and that moment has made him famous. At school, I definitely get recognized. I hired new bodyguards. I'm always running around with that snack, escaping crowds of children. After gaining attention for his unexpected review, Abe and his mom decided to turn the spotlight on others. We launched TerribleSandwich.com as a way of trying to raise funds and awareness to fight childhood hunger. It's a cause that's close to our hearts and we wanted to use this little moment in the spotlight to try to give back and do some good. So we have Terrible Sandwich merch coming out. Terrible Sandwich, by the way. And Thanks for letting me know, Merch. Thanks for letting me know. Half of the profits go to hungry children all across, I guess, the world. Abe went viral for saying what's on his mind. And what's on his mind these days isn't terrible at all. How I feel about this little time in fame, it's, I don't want all, everything going to me. I want some of this funding for someone else. Like hungry children, like a thousand, millions, billions of hungry children around the world. I don't want everything going to me. I'm not gonna lie to you, if I hopped off the bus and I told my mom that her sandwich was terrible, she's not gonna like it. Not gonna like it at all. She's gonna look at me and say, you better eat what I make and you better like it. That's just how I grew up. 
Okay, four-year-old Celine received a terrifying diagnosis as a baby, given just two years to live. Not only has she overcome the odds, she's now hitting the runway and breaking down stereotypes. CBS Miami's Lisa Petrillo has the story. Four-year-old Celine Damalski is busy riding her unicorn at her mommy beach condo as she gets ready to walk in a very important fashion show. I'm doing a fashion show. Are you excited? So what are you doing in the fashion show? I'm supposed to do a half turn. As Celine practices her turn, her mom, Amber Joy Watkins, tells us that when beautiful Celine was just an infant, she and her husband, Tom Domowski, felt something wasn't quite right with her baby girl. When she was about three months, I noticed that she wasn't, you know, rolling or kicking or just doing some of the things that I saw other kids do in my mommy and me yoga class. At first, her pediatrician told her Celine was just fine, but Amber Joy could tell something was off. A few months later, she was told to find a neurologist right away. The diagnosis, SMA, or spinal muscular atrophy. Celine has the most severe type, SMA type 1, and it's a disease that affects all muscles of the body. So um, gross motor, it affects your ability to swallow, your ability to breathe, and uh, just every muscle in the body, similar to ALS. A frightening diagnosis that left her parents understandably devastated. And the life expectancy left untreated is two years. So it was a very scary diagnosis. But soon there was hope. I mean, more than a glimmer of hope. At the time we were told, hey, there are these treatments coming on the market and, you know, we don't know a lot about them, but we're going to try them. We're going to try them. Lean is very fortunate to have received treatment and that's why we are here today. So it's a game changer. Huge. Lifesaver. This is tough. Celine continues to get stronger. In fact, she has big plans for the future. What do you want to be when you grow older? A doctor. A doctor? Or a chef. <laughs> or a chef. Either one of those are a perfect choice. Just last week, to kick off New York Fashion Week, Celine and her mom and others with CMA hit the runway wearing designs they adapted with Open Style Lab. The program is sponsored by Genentech as part of the SMA My Way program, which was built to support and raise awareness for the SMA community. We are claiming our space in the fa fashion world, letting people know that there is a space for disabled people. Watching Celine walk the runway was a steal the show moment that her mom hopes will help change long held stereotypes for Celine and others like her. I just want people to see that Celine is fashionable, and beautiful, and smart, and, and beautiful, and smart, even with SMA. Her walk in the runway is helping people run themselves, figuratively and literally. Coming up, three siblings losing their vision with a mom who figured out a way to help them live the life to the fullest. They said the best thing you can do is to fill their visual memory. And they were talking about uh, reading books and seeing pictures of elephants and giraffes and books. And, and that's when it clicked. Plus, our heartwarming videos you just need to see. Stick around, you are watching The Uplift. Welcome back to The Uplift. We now have our heartwarming videos you just need to see. Starting with this one, taken at the graduation ceremony for a Teesside University in Northern England. I mean, come on, come on. When you hear a baby's voice, you can't help but to smile. I love that video. All right, now take a look at our next video where a brother meets his sister's boyfriend for the first time. Mr. Bucket Hat. Hey, buddy. Are you gonna jump in my arm, Phil? Oh, wait. What's up, buddy? I had a crazy dream. Oh. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. He's like, I had a crazy dream. So here's the deal. That is Nate who traveled from Chicago to Nashville to meet his sister, Lindsay's boyfriend. Lindsay told us that they did FaceTime often before meeting in person. So clearly they hit it off. Oh, I love that video. OK, this next video shows a boy named Junie on a field trip to a fire station. 
Junie, who is blind, uh, got to meet a firefighter for the first time. That meant filling his uniform and gear, hearing the sounds his equipment made, and asking all of the questions that he wanted. His mom said it was his favorite part of the field trip. All right, how about one more heartwarming video? This one is from Tatiana and Preston, who were trying for their first baby and were about to look at a pregnancy test. Check it out. Right there. In the middle. Yeah, it's gonna say not pregnant. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what if it says not pregnant? I'm gonna be sad. <laughs> One baby. Tatiana no and Preston way. are parents to a beautiful two-month-old named Ayana. Congratulations. Coming up, meet a mom of four who's staying positive, even though three of her children are losing their vision. What she's doing to make sure they have full lives. Plus the boy who got to make one wish and chose to use it on something selfless. And a California cowboy who had a special friendship with the queen, yeah, the queen, that one, how they met decades ago. We're now going to introduce you to a family from Canada that is traveling the world for an entire year. And there's a good reason for the epic journey. Caitlin O'Kane has the story. Many moms dream of their children growing up and seeing the world. But when three of her four kids started having vision problems, Edith LeMay learned that their time to do that might be running out. Her oldest child, Mia, started bumping into things and was diagnosed with a genetic disease known as retinitis pigmentosa. What it does is that uh, the retina dies, the cell in the retina dies over time and they lose their field of vision. So they're going to lose their vision from the outside to the, the center and in the end they're gonna see through it's like seeing through a straw and there's a chance that they'll go completely blind by midlife then her two younger sons started exhibiting the same symptoms and she learned they had it too of course it was devastating um and you know when you have a kid you you always have like an image of what the future is going to be like and what your future is going to be like and all of a sudden you get that news and you need to erase that and, and, and think think it think it over and and it, it really it's a grieving process she thought about teaching them braille but a specialist had another suggestion and they said the best thing you can do is to fill their visual memory and they were talking about by reading books and seeing pictures of elephants and giraffes and books. And, and that's when it clicked. I'm like, I'm not gonna do that in books. I'm gonna go see them in real life. In March, they left Canada and embarked on an epic journey, traveling the globe for a whole year, showing their kids the world before it was too late. We spoke to them on their stop in Bali. They had already crossed Africa, from Namibia to Tanzania, they visited Turkey and Mongolia and planned to work their way through Asia next. They're kids. They're excited about pretty much anything. They'll go through it um, with the urgency of seeing things and remembering things. They don't think about, oh, it, it might be the last time I see that thing. Or um, they're really uh, in the moment and they enjoy it. They made a bucket list of things to do together allowing each kid to see their dreams come true. So Mia loves horses, so she really wanted to um, go horseback riding. And we did that in Mongolia, and she felt so free. After the, the horseback riding, she like had tears in her eyes because she was so happy. That was really beautiful to see. Colin, what he wanted to do is to sleep on a train. So when we went on the Tazara in uh, Tanzania, um, and we had like all our bunk beds in the train and we slept 
uh, being rocked by the movement of the train. He was super happy. And in the little one, one of the things he wanted to do is um, he wanted to drink juice on a camel. That was really specific. And we thought it was so funny. And we actually did. When we were in Mongolia, um, we went uh, camel riding and we got a juice just for him, just to take a picture. And he was super happy. Edith said her kids aren't only making memories. They're learning valuable life lessons, like focusing on the positive. I want them to know that any situation that's hard, it's temporary. Because through their life, they'll need lots of resilience um, because they're going to adapt to a situation with their eyesight. And then like a few years or a few months later, they'll lose another chunk of their eyesight and they'll need to um, readapt and adapt again and, and, and fall and get back again. Every parent wants the world for their kids, and Edith gave it to hers. All right, you may have heard of little free libraries where neighbors can leave books for each other. But what is a dog library? CBS Minnesota's Kirsten Mitchell explains. When we walked by, he found a bowl of water and pretty much demolished the entire thing. On Wilson Street in northeast Minneapolis, hey, oh, hello. dogs like Good Murphy boy. are sniffing out something special made just for them. Pick up toys, to pick up leashes, to pick up poop bags, because everyone should pick up their poop, please. It's a dog library where people can share old items or take what they need. My neighbors had come over with a little bouquet after I'd lost Charlie just two and a half weeks ago. And we started talking about getting things out that we could share with other neighbor dogs. That's when the idea was unleashed. It's really cute dog wallpaper on the tile floor. And Will Mound got to work fast. About three days. Really? Just yeah, just putzing around in the garage. Besides the dog library, Will Mound is also known for his creative projects around the neighborhood. He's also made a little free library. And you'll find these little wooden fairy doors speckled all over the area. It was one of the first rounds of layoffs in the beginning of the pandemic, and it was hard to find work at that time. So I just, I needed something to do, and it was kind of my outlet. It's not just a love of dogs uniting these neighbors. It's the shared loss of losing a dog over the past year. We lost our dog, Harold, a little over a year ago. Dan and Emily lost Hank. Yeah, it's been nice because, I mean, we all experienced it all at the same time. So we were kind of able to, like, support each other a little bit that way. And Lisa lost Charlie. Their names are now displayed on the library. It was very personal and very sweet for me to see Charlie's name up there. There's just so much out there right now that's negative, so it's kind of nice to feel mm -hmm. something something new. Touching the hearts and the new snouts on Wilson Street. Everybody's getting new dogs now. <laughs> so. <laughs> In Minneapolis, Kirsten Mitchell, WCCO 4 News. Everyone's getting a dog, but not me. Honey, a toy Burleson. Did you see that? See those smiles on their faces? I'm talking about the dogs and the people. I want a dog. All right, coming up, meet the boy who received a Make-A-Wish and decided to use it on something that could benefit other children. What was his wish? We'll tell you. Plus, the cowboy and the queen. How did this pair form an unlikely friendship? I thought she was a groom. I said, nice to meet you. And I stepped back and I went, oh my God. Oh, you're the queen. And she, yes. Last time I checked. Many children with critical illnesses receive the opportunity to choose a Make-A-Wish. Quinn Larson did something unique with his. CBS Minnesota's Susan Elizabeth Littlefield has the story. Life can be full of ups and downs. The Larson family knows it well. Their oldest son, Quinn, fell from a window, then got meningitis. He lost his hearing and ability to speak, but he never lost his drive. I remember distinctly. When we first met Quinn in 2019, he was a kid with a dream and a long shot goal. He donated his own money to make a wish to make the dream of an accessible playground happen. I think the community raised $307,000 just to make just it happen. Yeah. In this small town. Right. Yeah. At 
add in Quinn's money and a grant from DNR, and voila, what was once a cornfield is now a field of dreams. And then we built it, and they came. And boy, did they ever. About 500 people showed up at Quinn's playground. The ground is wheelchair accessible. There's a resting spot for kids with autism, sign language art, the swings are accessible, and the zip line. Oh, the zip line. It means that he can hang out with us when we're on the playground. Mm -hmm. So then he can be included with all the fun stuff we do. You did this, Clint. You did this. This is yours. This is your dream. A dream realized in silence and in strength. Actions speak louder than words. In Waconia, Susan Elizabeth Littlefield, WCCO, 4 News. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Kids are the purest of the pure. So when Queen Elizabeth died, many stories about her life came out, including one about an unlikely friend, a cowboy from California. Mark Strassman is with the story. And this is the Queen's hallway. Improbably, indelibly, Monty Roberts became Queen Elizabeth's horseman and more. Her Majesty has treated me as if I was uh, a younger brother. Roberts revolutionized horse training, taming horses using a silent language of kindness. In 1989, the Queen, with her lifelong love of horses, invited him to her stables at Windsor Castle. I thought she was a groom. I said, nice to meet you. And I stepped back and I went, oh my God. Oh, you're the queen. And she, yes, last time I checked. Handwritten letters and annual Christmas greetings framed their three-decade relationship. Did you consider her a friend? I would call her Her Majesty, but the friendship was deep. Did you ever think to yourself, what am I doing hanging out with Her Majesty? <laughs> Only two or three times a day. <laughs> And every night when I went to bed. On Monday, Monty Roberts will go to the funeral of a friend, still in shock. I said, no. What? And I don't want to let her go. She's going to be with me every instant that I'm alive. A dark horse friendship. The California cowboy and the queen. The cowboy and the rest of the world did not want to let her go, but her legacy lasts forever. That's our show. I hope this news and these stories and the joy, the pure joy, brightened up your day and lifted you right up.